Eric Schneider here for GayLoveMatters.com and I got an email from uh, a, uh, one of the viewers of the channel and I wanted to share the content with you. Basically it's a, a story of a gay couple that have been together for a really long time and they love each other very much and they've gone through some rocky times together and they took a temporary split uh, and during that time one of them met someone and fell in love and experienced all those yummy feelings of passion and lust and romance. Um, that often in a long-term relationship wane. Um, and he wrote me. He says, I don't know what to do. Uh, I feel tortured. Um, how do I make this choice? And so that's what the topic of the video is. Um, it's my belief that this is an erroneous choice, that basically what's happening here is that there's a triangulation of, of different kinds of experiences that are being sort of held and contained in these two relationships that can conceivably be brought into one or the other relationship. Um, but I'll explain that further when we come back. Hi, Eric Schneider here for GayLoveMatters.com. And this is, a, this is not a, a, this is not a, how can I say it? This is not a choice that is unfamiliar to me. I've had a lot of gay men come to me as clients sort of presenting this kind of choice. And I want to share with you how I think about it. Um, one of the things that's really important here is that this is indeed the choice between two oranges. It's not as different as a choice between an apple and a hamburger. Um, it is actually much more similar than different. And as we talk about this, I think you'll get a sense of, of why that's so. Um, it really, when I read the email, it reminded me of a story that I heard when I was younger about a donkey and two carrots. Um, there was a carrot at one end of the field and another carrot at the other end of the field. And as the donkey walked closer to one carrot, he realized he was getting further away from the other carrot. So he'd turn and start moving towards that carrot. And he again would realize he's moving away from the other carrot. So he'd turn again and he'd move towards that carrot. And eventually the donkey just died of starvation. Um, you have to make a choice, but this is not really a choice. Uh, let me explain. Uh, suppose, uh, well, let me frame it this way. You have, you know, sort of the boring and monotonous and, you know, same old, same old over here. And you have uh, exciting and passionate and lustful and filled with potential and possibility over there. Well, given the orientation, this relationship has to pale in comparison. But another word for monotonous is reliable. Another word for for same old, same old, is trustworthy. Another word for uh, a lack of passion uh, is often a sense of companionship and warmth. So before we start comparing these, these two things uh, in this way, let's take a moment to look at them a little closer. Suppose you do, in fact, go off with you know, your budding romance. Um, there's an interesting human dynamic around, you know, the excitation of, of, of uh, sort of what happens when we fall in lust and in romance. You know, the same dopaminergic circuitry in the brain is being triggered in the same way that it would be if you were taking crack cocaine. You're not quite in your right mind. And so many people know that they have a dynamic that eventually will try to make the new, the novel, the exciting, same old, same old. We want that sense of safety. We want that sense of security. And it almost seems antithetical that the thing that we're so after, we're gonna actually have and then you know, make just like the old relationship. And even though we know this, right, we know our tendency to do this, we kind of ignore it. And you know, we have thanks to that dopaminergic circuitry that kind of, you know, what? Um, I don't have to use my reasonability, right? Um, Okay, but now suppose you go deeper into your, your current relationship. You know, are you doomed to boring and monotonous and, you know, same old, same old? Well, no, not necessarily. That's really up to you. You know, Esther Perel, um, author of Mating in Captivity and um, a very, uh, a, made famous by some of her TED Talks, talks extensively about, you know, we live longer and it's harder to maintain that balance between eroticism and intimacy or the paradox, as she would put it, between eroticism and intimacy. But the issue here is that 
the, the, the narrative of your relationship, the story that you tell yourself of that relationship, the safety and security that you think is there in such a, a, a full way is really just a story. There's a lot you don't know about yourself, your partner, and what your relationship could really be about. You know, I always say to my clients that, you know, the, your real relationship begins when the mythology of your relationship starts to fall apart. Uh, fall apart. And I think that it's important to, you know, at that point to know that actually you kind of need help. Uh, it's not automatic pilot that makes a relationship kind of grow and evolve um, without going stale. And you need a container. And I believe that that's where a relationship therapist or a couples therapist uh, uh, can help create that container so that you can kind of re-meet each other and reconnect with one another and actually potentially fall in love all over again. So let me go back over this. Again, this is, you know, after the honeymoon is over over here, it's going to move into the same territory as this relationship over here. The question is, do you want to do that again? You know, and I often compare this to roller coasters. Um, I am not a fan of roller coasters at all, okay? I just want to say that up front. I find them I'm horrifying. Um, but... It went, you know, when you go on a roller coaster the first time, it, it's really new, it's very exciting, it's, it's scary, it's thrilling, right? And that, that same sort of dopamine experience is what you're having. On the 20th time, you kind of know which way the thing is going to turn, which way it's not going to turn, when it's going to flip over on itself, when you're going to be upside down, when you're going to be right side up. So it becomes very familiar. The difference between a roller coaster and a human being is, well, in truth, is that human beings have more variables and many of them are below the surface and many of them you won't actually get to know until you really decide you want to get to know your partner better. So there is no wrong decision. There is no right decision. You're going to learn uh, by whatever decision you make. So it's good. In that sense, it's going to be a win-win. Um, it's going to be a painful decision to make. And you know, whether or not you're going to let go of fantasy over here or what you're going to actually shake up reality over here, that's entirely up to you. Um, people often ask me, well, how do you know when it's over? Well, if you're asking me, um, you're probably, it's probably not over yet. Um, so you may want to consider the possibility of going deeper and, and, uh, or not. Again, the choice is yours. But just remember, you're really choosing oranges and oranges they're going to wind up being the same thing. And as another mentor of mine once said, Ivana Gazarian, she said that we don't get the relationship we want. We get the one we're willing to work on. And no matter what choice you make, you still have to work on them. This is Eric Schneider for GayLoveMatters.com. And if you've enjoyed this video, please share it amongst your friends and uh, subscribe to the Gay Love Matters YouTube channel. I'll see you next time. Be well.